So today, I'm going to attempt to repair my old Husky air compressor. I don't remember where I got this thing or when, but it's been quite a while. I'm sure there's probably a date on the uh, tank because it's a pressure vessel, but I'm not 100%. But anyway, I've had this at least 15, if not more than 20 years. And finally, the on off pressure system has died. Um, this relief valve had we has weakened to the point where it's just barely above where this was shutting off and now the shut off doesn't shut off anymore so it over it gets tries to over pressure if you hold this it just it's not a good thing so I've got a new one and we're gonna see what we can do and if this does work all of these new parts and stuff like that that I put on this thing are gonna be available at my Amazon affiliate store which uh, There'll be a link down in the description below. So that uh, if y'all are interested in any of the tools we tools I use on the channel or any of the parts that I've used on all the various and sundry cars and campers and stuff and whatnot that I've worked on, uh, I've got the vast majority of those linked off of there. And uh, I certainly would appreciate y'all's support. Anyway, down to the down to business. So I had gotten it kind of working, but not great. First thing I'm going to do, it's unplugged, so the first thing I'm going to do is unscrew my hose. I really didn't want that to leak. Phew. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is. Next thing we've got is this pipe, this little line, is the trigger to shut it off. That's just a little compression fitting. And I think if you push in on this, this will pull out. What I'm going to do is, that's a more normal style one. So I'm going to go get a little screwdriver, we're going to fix that. There you go. Push in, pull it out, and this pops right out. Let's see if we can do that here too. Yep, there. That we're gonna save. All right. Now well, the next thing I'm gonna do is take this screw out, and expose the wires because I've got to get the wires from the motor and the wires from the plug onto that switch. There it is. I'm comparing the instructions for the new one with this old one, see what we want to do here. So I got a black, a white, and a green from there, a black, a white, and a green going there. So I'm going to take my new one, pull the same cover off. says okay it's a little bit of a different setup we got the input here on this one and the output here neutral and power and then two grounds so that's what we're going to do once we get this off There we 
go. Now it looks like we need some 530 seconds, maybe six millimeter socket to get the grounds off. So I'm gonna go find that. It actually appears to be a quarter inch. And there's a clamp that holds the wires in. Looks like it's held in place with a Phillips. Okay, so now we've got our power disconnected from the wall and from the motor. All the rest of this stuff should be able to come off. Now it, it is underneath. A uh, quarter NPT adapter, which I believe is the same as my new one. So we're gonna see if this will do. Well, I'm gonna go get a pipe wrench, put it on this thing, and give it a crank. Try not to break anything. port. So as you can see, the two units have similar porting on the bottom. Basically three-way with a fourth coming out the bottom. And then this, for my old one, is this for the new one. So that shouldn't be that big a deal, although it's just going to go in in a different spot. So I think what I'm going to do is mount this first and then worry about getting the wires where they need to go second. Alright, so I've made some decisions as far as to where I want my gauge, where I want my relief valve. And I'm basically going to end up flipping this around a little bit compared to where the other one was so that my outlet goes in the direction that I need it to. Uh, I don't think it'll be too bad. Alright, so now we'll try to put this thing on. should work if we can get it snaked down under here all right there we go so that is all of the fittings except for the hose and now we got to figure out how we're going to get our power connections taken care of. motor 
are hot, motor neutral, and ground. And these connections are different than what's on there currently. It looks like I can just strip the ends off these and wire them in straight up. Yep. All right. So that's what we're going to do. All right. Now I think we got it. We got the two motor up top, got the from plug down the bottom, and got my pressure switch plugged in. So I think we're getting close to turning it on. I'm going to plug it in and just see what happens when I throw the switch. I don't have an outlet plugged in yet, or an output for it plugged in yet, so. I guess that's a good sign. So now <clears throat> I'm going to hook up my airline again and let my system pressurize and see when it shuts off. not bad like we're at about 120 psi perfect right where it's supposed to and it shut off excellent so that is exactly what I wanted to do because my other one was not working terribly well at all so very good. Okay, so that's today's trip down Fix-It Lane. Got my air compressor back for all the tire work I'm about to have to do. And now I don't have to worry about the thing just running and running and running and burning itself up like it's tried to in the past. So, again, I'm going to have a link to my Amazon Affiliates page in the description of this video. I'll have this little bugger linked up there, and uh, I'm more than appreciative for any support you all throw towards, uh, towards this channel. As I enjoy making the videos. I hope you enjoy watching them. hope this has helped you out a little bit. If you got an air compressor that's acting up, it's not terribly difficult to fix. So, you all take care. Have a good one.